In Kent, 40% of businesses are based in rural areas. But homes cost more in the countryside. In Kent, average rural house prices are 12.4 times higher than the average rural income, which makes them unaffordable for many local people. Breakfast time, and Steve, Corinne and family are getting ready for the day ahead. Corinne and Steve were born and brought up in Braybourne Lees near Ashford. But they wouldn't be living here today if it wasn't for the fact that they live in an affordable local needs home. It is a beautiful village. You know, growing up here as a young child, all my friends live in the village. Um, I had a paper round at the shop, you know, my first job. Um, I had a lot of good friends, played for the football team, uh, got involved in lots of different things in the village. And to stay here is just, it's great. We um, had filled in the forms um, to be on the, the housing list for, for sort of other areas, the choice based lettings I think it was. Um, and then obviously the, the opportunity for the, these places came up um, and we had to fill in a form for that which again was quite straightforward, fairly easy to do. Um, and as Steve said we had an interview um, and then I think the process was kind of taken out of our hands and then we were sort of lucky enough to find out that we got one of the places so quite easy to do. Living in the village means Corinne can be near her mum, who's lived here for many years. And it means help with childcare. But it nearly didn't happen. In fact, at one stage it looked like Corinne and Steve simply wouldn't be able to find anywhere affordable to live. And that would have meant them having to move away altogether. It was a really horrible thought. Corrie was expecting the baby at the time and to think of Corrie and Steve and, and this baby to, to not be around and not be part of our lives was, was, it was a really difficult, difficult time to cope with. And then we heard that the, the project was, was potentially going to happen and so fingers crossed and, and the thought that they might get a house was very exciting but obviously we knew there were very few houses and an awful lot of people that wanted them. So why is it so important to have young, local families living in the village? Because without young people in the village, the village would not be this, it would be a dormitory town and the young people wouldn't want to come and live here because they can't afford to buy some of the houses. So affordable housing is vital to keep the village alive and thriving. And a lot of other people are out at work, they do their shopping when they're out at work. It's the mums, young mums that are really important and it keeps the school open. And <laughs> Uh, it gives me people to work in the shop. I have a couple of full-timers in the shop, both of whom were born in the village and live in the village, and will soon be looking for affordable housing of their own, hopefully. At Braybourne Lees, the parish council played a key role in helping to bring new, affordable homes to the village. It took hard work, planning and discussion, and at first, not everyone was enthusiastic. There were folk who were a bit reluctant to think about new uh, development, but I think that they were to a great degree reassured when it became clear through the offices of the Housing Association that the housing would be specifically for young people, people who have a direct connection with the village, um, and it will be kept for that purpose, not just for the first residents to move in, but always. The Passmore family from Goodniston near Canterbury were born locally and now live in one of the village's newly built affordable local needs homes. And in this case, it's the village school that's benefiting because Therese works there. I started helping out there voluntarily, reading in the afternoon and things, and then I was offered the job to do the breakfast club. So we're there at quarter to eight in the morning and we have about 10 to 15 children coming over. And then I do the work down, I'm a teaching assistant there, which is great, it's in class one, so I'm with my two daughters. Developments like this one that we're looking at today uh, are small in scale, we're only talking about half a dozen houses or perhaps ten at the most, but have a huge impact on the local economy. They don't stand out as being any different from any other housing and uh, we aim to provide this sort of small development that fits very well into the local community, respects the local style and when it's mellowed a little bit will look as if it's been here for 20 or 30 years in, in no time at all is the people living here who will be living and working locally, sending their children to local schools, 
uh, buying in local shops and contributing to the local community, that's the really big impact. The Rural Housing Enabler made herself very available indeed to us and was more than happy to come to meetings, to discuss things on the phone, to generally follow up at every angle whenever we had a query or something troubled us or indeed troubled any of our parishioners and who came to us with, with a query. If we didn't have the answer then we knew that she would and she supported us every step of the way and through the good offices of the Housing Association actually it wasn't too difficult at all. We love being back in Goodniston. It's just a dream come true to come back and to the village where you know we love it here mm. and the walks we have you know and everything it's it's just great.